Hello OAS family, it is time for another book review and today we are reviewing Butterflies and Insects by Yu Zijian and Xu Jijuang. So before we get into the details of the book, I want to talk about some general statistics. The book is a very popular size. It is about it is about eight um, and a quarter inches wide by 11 and three quarter inches high. It's a very popular uh, book size, especially in Asia. And it has approximately 117 pages with text primarily in Chinese, although some titles uh, are translated into English. So we're going to get into the uh, we're going to get into the, the body of the book. It's important to note that insects, like many things in nature and Chinese culture, have a very revered uh, symbolism, and so. I think it is kind of the Chinese culture's background in Taoism that is always looking at things in nature and using them as ways to learn and ways to feel connected. So in for that reason, uh, insects, they get sort of in Western culture, they get a little bit of a reputation as being, oh, these are like creepy crawly things or things that you need to, you know, get rid of, they're pests. But um in uh, in Chinese culture, because of this sort of underlying Taoist philosophy, there is a, a lot of reverence and a lot of symbolism associated with insects. So we are getting here through the introduction. And we have some sort of older paintings here. Some finished pieces that feature uh, butterflies and with uh, this is uh, here uh, butterfly and loquat and then here a couple butterflies here with some reeds and leaves in the background again some more paintings with this very antique look So opening nice with sort of a gallery of these finished compositions. And most of these paintings are in the Gongbi style or the Chinese fine line style. So you can see that is quite common for expressing insects is to use the Gongbi style because you have more detail ac accessible to you through that style. But we do have some spontaneous styles. Just as I say that, we, we are... Uh, entering into a couple finished compositions that are done in this more boneless or free or spontaneous or shayi style. So you can see these largely ink pieces here. Uh, this one with the adorable chrysanthemum with a, a sort of rooster looking up at uh, some flying insects, butterflies. And the, these last three paintings are all by Chi Bai Shi. So he's a very well-known, sort of like one of the um, original, uh, almost like founders of the spontaneous style of Chinese painting. Another piece by Chi Bai Shi here. And here is uh, a, a very interesting, a little bit more detailed, uh, and it has a mix of sort of like um, some spontaneous elements, you know, so, so some of these are done in kind of like a boneless style that de-emphasizes the line work, but then you see some sort of outlined uh, pieces too that are, that, that are just line work. So you have, that's an interesting juxtaposition where you have these sort of colored in uh, ones that are very, uh, that, that de-emphasize the line work and then you have these line work pieces right there. So more uh, finished compositions here, showcasing peony and butterflies. 
Uh, all of these, the last pe uh, paintings are by uh, Wang Sui Tao. And then this is uh, a rose. Again here, uh, this is showcasing the fine line style. Very distinctive style by this artist where you can see this very dramatic shading and transition of color in that fine line style where they have this very dark center that fades out into lighter colors towards the edges. So spontaneous style over here and then a close up sort of fine line style, very nice perspective here on this very close up um, painting. This is also sort of touted as a spontaneous style, but you can see here there is a choice to do um, to 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 do some line work here, some emphasizing some outlines, even even in the spontaneous style here. So here's a finished composition showing a daffodil or narcissus and butterfly, and then five different butterflies over here in the more elaborate or fine line style. This is a, a piece showcasing hibiscus and butterfly, and this is the full composition here, and this is a zoom in for the detail. So nice when they're able to do that, especially uh, with a subject where uh, the detail is so important. So you can see up close here, it provides a really nice look at the details of the butterfly. Uh, elaborate style orchid with butterfly here. And then here is uh, inclusion. So this is a very kind of classic bamboo composition, but you can see this inclusion of the butterfly just gives it a completely unique touch, you know. Uh, you can see this, of course, this is a beautifully done painting. If it were just the bamboo itself, it would be lovely and fine. But then adding that butterfly into it just provides this like sense of intrigue, especially when you have this color element set against this ink work. It is really just a nice touch and a great way to use um, uh, the an, uh, element like a butterfly in a, in a composition. So we have this elaborate style here and then you can see here with this uh, butterfly behind uh, these colored leaves and then a close-up here we actually have a couple different butterflies one's this larger one that you can see almost facing facing us with its uh, belly and then this one is more of a side profile view really nice that they provide the blow up here and then uh, ne right next to here the final composition so peonies on the left, and then again, daffodils or narcissus on the right. Really nice example here, again, of like so, uh, an element that's sort of monochromatic as a background with a feature in full color. So here's uh, another butterfly element where the background elements are dry rubbed. That's an interesting technique. If you have never seen it before, it's where they basically used like a sized piece of paper and they apply, or it could be any, you know, you could even paint on a surface of glass or plexiglass or something, you know, just something that will repel the moisture and keep the moisture on the surface. And then they lay a paper over the top of it to dry rub it. And then they get this very interesting pattern that they use for the background there. And then they add these uh, detailed butterflies in the middle. Really nice technique there. And then here, some sort of boneless style flowers blended with butterflies. So a couple compositions where we're focusing on just the butterflies themselves set amidst this rose that also has a butterfly, white butterfly in the background. This is uh, a time where we're seeing the use of white against this sort of natural colored paper, which provides a nice accent. So more 
compositions here. This is interesting where the background is done in outline. So both of these compos or these three compositions, the background elements are done in outline that really showcases the butterflies in the foreground. Very interesting choice there. And then some more examples. I really like where they play around with the, the positioning of the insect. You know, it's like a simply shaped insect, but you get so much variety based on its position in flight. So you can see all of these here that you, it really gives you that spirit of, of where you see that sort of cluster of butterflies and then the shapes are constantly changing in, in flight and in motion. So really nice, elaborate style here, spontaneous style here. So this is very interesting where they combine a much uh, sort of finer, more outlined approach for the butterflies and then use the more free approach uh, for the these, I believe they're iris in the background. Couple pages where they show uh, close up of different types of butterflies. So nice, you can see the detail here of, of each one as they show it just isolated and kind of a zoom in and a lot of different variety of positions and uh, wing patterns. So the section here where they talk about the different life stages, you know, they have like this kind of egg and the caterpillar and the pupa transformation stage into the cocoon stage into the butterfly. Little section on anatomy. So some photographs here accompanying that little section. Here is a, a sort of a four stage buildup where they see like you see like the initial line work and then the secondary detail of the line work, the initial shading and then how they uh, continue in different uh, elements of shading. So this is a nice uh, five step build up here in this fine line or Gongbi style. So now you can see it applied in color. This is very nice where they focus on the actual body. So you can see that the wings are left in outline and then they really show you how they build the detail in the body of the insect here. So different examples of uh, styles of outline work here. We have a sort of a smoother style here. We have a lot more texture being shown. And then you can see uh, here, it's like the colored uh, shaded in versions of the line work here that's on the left. Once again, we have uh, line work and shading and then this is like uh, four stages uh, here. So we have the line work and then we have the initial shading and then we have the second stage of shading and then the final stage here. So final composition featuring grapes and butterfly on the left-hand side. And this is our first uh, spontaneous style uh, um, sequential buildup. So now you can see in this looser, more spontaneous style, how they make the shapes here, and then they can add some structure with the details and the line work until we get the final finished composition here. So you can really see here how it comes together. And you can see how these uh, are these classic strokes. We're having an office hours coming up where we're talking about like, basically how it's the same calligraphy strokes that are being used 
for all of these different subjects and the spontaneous style of painting. And you can see here where we're starting with just these sort of like petal strokes. This could easily be a flower, um, but uh, it's, it's actually a butterfly. So really valuable pictures here. So it's it's important. Uh, I really I really like these video book reviews. Uh, one because you know we can we can let people know uh, very clearly when uh, a a book uh, has mostly Chinese writing and if that would uh, uh, bother people uh, or if they would become satisfied because if they dissatisfied because if they got the book and it was only in Chinese. But you can see here that there is tremendous value that transcends language here in the visuals. So um, uh, at this price point, really, you just need a couple of these visuals um, to, to make the book worth uh, worth its weight, uh, or worth the price at least. Um, and so you can see this uh, sequential buildup here uh, of maybe these, basically a three-stage buildup where we have these two butterflies, one where you have the wings more um, tilted or obscured by the flight position, and then this one where you can really see it open and you can see that the, t the top of the insect very clearly. And you can see them build it up in the, from these initial uh, background stroke stages where we're using like these flower petal strokes and then how they fill in the detail with the lines and then add the third element of color here and they're building up in five stages so you can see where they add the details of the antennae and the legs at the end really uh, cool in bit of instruction here and then they uh, do the same thing uh, with uh, with a largely ink piece. So you can see here, this is like pretty similar to the last one. Uh, and you can see how different it looks when you just vary the shades. And so that is the, that is kind of like why we like flower painting too. It's like once you learn the strokes, because of the variety that exists in nature and just the natural patterns, it's almost like endless, then you can, uh, produce a lot of different colors and patterns it's really just uh, up to the limits of your imagination really. so you can see here another ni very nice one two three four stage buildup in this largely ink with a little bit of shades of red so another here four stage buildup of these three different uh flight positions using this more muted or fall color tone palette. Here we see our, our first ones that are showcasing sequential buildups of the subject in ink. So this is nice where we use the spontaneity of the ink to omit the details, or, or we just have like basically a you know, black winged butterfly, which uh, they definitely exist. And then here you are seeing uh, ink, but where they're using the white space to create more variation and using the line work and the texture. So that is the whole section on butterfly. It's about, it's, it's actually a little bit more than half the book, you know, so at, at 79, we start to get into the other various insects that are covered here. So bees, of course, are very important and iconic and symbolic. So we start this section here with some bees. Different postures for bees here. It's also interesting, like, you know, different, um, like, I think that's like the, one of the first things that I noticed when I took trips to Asia is like the insects there, because a lot of the, the places there that you visit are tropical. And so you get a lot of biodiversity in the animal life there and just amazing like insects and they make crazy sounds and they have beautiful striking colors. So it's really cool. Um, you know, this is a nice subject to examine uh, another culture and another another part of the world. So here's some more bees set in the context of final compositions here in this elaborate fi fine line style. 
where we have uh, peony on one side and then uh, morning glory on the other side. So here are dragonflies, also very symbolic, lucky, symbol of luck in Chinese culture. And also very interesting patterns here. Here's uh, some technique where they're showing wing translucency. So you can see here how they, how they, they do that shading uh, so that to depict the translucency of the wings there. It's really nice. And then here are some looser renditions where you can see just if you want to render it a little bit more abstractly or just depict the idea of it, um, you know, you have these varying levels of detail from, you know, fairly nice levels of detail to very abstract. But uh, you can see that they all do a fairly good job of saying, hey, this is a dragonfly. So a few more in the elaborate style. Here, more monochromatic ink dominant here, uh, incorporating a little bit more color. This water lily and dragonfly we featured in uh, an email that we sent earlier this week. So this is that, that painting in the book. And then we have uh, here this autumn chrysanthemum with the dragonfly in the spontaneous style and a very ink dominant piece. Mantis, very important insect in Chinese culture, symbol of strength. And there is a martial arts style that models, there's a style of Kung Fu that models its movement after the mantis. Those of you who watch those Kung Fu movies, you can see that they always have these animal-inspired styles like crane style and mantis style and tiger style. So here are more detailed renditions on the left side in the more elaborate style. And then over here we have looser styles, varying levels of details from these outlines that can be quite detailed and then into these more shaded things where we get less detail. So here is a pear blossom with the mantis. And then now we are changing insects to grasshopper. So we can see here different renditions. So such interesting these, you know, the jointed legs of all insects, but particularly the grasshopper because it has such powerful legs. And then some here, some final compositions featuring uh, here a grasshopper and a hornet with some grapes. Now we see cricket. Nice details in here where you can see how they render these little details of the of these legs where you can see these little hairs and details that are on the legs of the insects and the crickets so uh some more final compositions fe featuring crickets and grasshopper and then finally we finished with cicada so really a lot of the most iconic insects covered here, particularly the ones that are important for Asian culture. So we have butterflies and we had mantis and we had dragonflies and cicada and grasshoppers and crickets. Oh, and then beetle, yes. So closing the book with beetles.
And then here's another simple, very simple, uh, spontaneous style build up for four, four stages of a dragonfly. Very nice, simple willow with a beetle here. Really easy composition to play around with. And you can see like these jointed strokes that they use for the antenna of the beetle. Really lovely accent to a very simple painting. And then green mantis built up in four stages here. And then a couple final compositions featuring mantis. So that's it. Uh, so that it's Butterfly and Insects by Yu Jian and uh, Su Ji Zhuang. So if you are interested in this book, you can purchase it on our website at orientalartsupply.com. And we thank you for listening and we appreciate you uh, watching our video book reviews. Make sure you like and subscribe for more content like this and leave us a comment if you have any suggestions or would like to request uh, any more book reviews or books on different subjects. We can, we, we're happy to help you out and point you into the direction that you need to go in for your next bit of inspiration. And as always, we wish you happy painting. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.